alu tikki, sev puri, moong dal, chana and masala dosa. May not scream Israeli cooking, but Amit Raz, who runs a popular establishment offering delectable Indian cuisine, could pass for a Bollywood actor. He also happens to have a very Indian sounding name. Actually, he is Israeli born and grew up in his grandmother's kitchen sorting out grains and grinding Middle Eastern spices until one day he decided to pack his bags and head off to the south of India where he enrolled himself in an Indian cooking school. The first thing he learned was how to make masala dosa, a huge rice and lentil pancake with exotic fillings. Kajal was invited to attend one of Amit's cooking classes. Born on the shores of the Red Sea, Amit Raz was 13 when his family emigrated to South Africa. Childhood memories of a spice-filled kitchen grew into a passion for South Indian cooking, which he shares with Cape Town foodies. There's undoubtedly something enchanting about the aroma of Indian spices. It immediately transports me to a warm, homely place and gets my taste buds tingling. No matter where you go in the world, you'll find an Indian restaurant. But why not try your hand at cooking? Why leave it to our aunts, grandmas and moms? Today, I'm trying my hand at Indian cuisine and I'm attending a class hosted by celebrated chef Amit Raz. Let's get cooking. Hi, Amit. Hi, How welcome. Good, I'm Kajal. Lovely to meet you and welcome. I'm very excited about our cooking class today. Good. Are you busy prepping for it? I am. I've got a whole array of spices here set up and lots of little surprises hidden away here. So we're going to have lots of fun today. I'm looking forward to it. Where did your love for Indian food come from? It started with childhood, definitely. Um, India was always a place of mystery and inspiration. I mean, who inspired you to explore food further? That would definitely be my grandmother. She brought lots of love into the kitchen and I think that's definitely where my love has come from. Now, when it comes to Indian cooking, what is your favorite dish or your signature dish? I would say definitely masala dosa is a dish that I think it's just simple and perfect. There's something also about the waiting period of making a dosa. Looking around, uh, the place really looks like a little India and it's got um, some Bollywood spice in it. Do you watch Bollywood? Indeed, yes. <laughs> if someone who has not much knowledge of food and Indian food in particular wants to start their first curry. What advice would you give them? Knowledge of spices is very important. And what are you cooking for us today? Well, guess what? You'll be cooking today. With help <laughs> from you? Sure. <laughs> okay, well, I'm excited about it. Let's get started. Hello, welcome. Hi. Amit. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. I think the best way to start an Indian cookery class is to get to know our essential ingredients got a bowl full of spices in front of you. You're gonna empty the bowl into the plate and you've got a little piece of paper and I'm gonna give you one minute. One minute? <laughs> <laughs> to identify as many spices as you can. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've got another 10 seconds. Come on. <laughs> All right. We're gonna throw a handful of cinnamon into a pan, green cardamom. I will add a small amount of star anise and even less so of the cloves because we said that they are very intense. Lastly, we're gonna use black pepper. Why do you need to roast the spices? The heat in the process of roasting the spices breaks down their oils and perfumes. This is a coffee grinder, which you can of course use for making a wonderful fresh masala. And ready and voila. I want you to pass it around and smell it and tell me what you think. That's going to be delicious, that's chai. <laughs> Ooh, that's <love. laughs> And we're gonna use it to make probably the best chai ever. Equal amounts of milk and water. Two cups of each here. I'm also going to add sugar. And I always recommend two teaspoons per cup. And then we're gonna use ginger. And I've got a very easy technique of peeling a ginger with a spoon. Look how easily it peels off. So do you wanna help me with this ginger? Give it a, a little try. This is a great idea. Maybe waste less. All right. Wow, good job there. So now I'm just going to add a couple of slivers. Of 
course, we're going to add our spices, which are essential ingredients here. Two teaspoons. One, two. Lastly, we're going to give it a little stir. One tea bag per cup. Let's have some salad chai. Oh, what do you think? It's creamy and it's delicious and it's it's almost like a dessert. It really is. And it's served true Indian style in a glass. And don't worry, the recipe is going to be available to all of you at home. Next up, we're going to get our hands messy and busy with some roti making. And the most wonderful thing about rotis is that it's so easy to make. We need oil, flour, salt, and some water, and some good strong arms for that. We've got half a cup in the bowl to which you're gonna need 50 mils of water and a teaspoon of oil. So we're gonna make a little well in a bowl and then add a teaspoon of oil, a sprinkle of salt, and you can either measure 50 mils of water or with enough experience, you actually get the feel of when you've used enough water back into the bowl with some bicep motion and that's all there is to it I'm afraid to say it's easy peasy teaspoon free hand and it has to be hot water it's warm water just um, makes it easier to combine. I feel like I should stand up here. <laughs> and what have we got here? <laughs> Too much water. <laughs> Amit, I need to make my mum proud, okay? I need to make right. good rotis. This needs a little bit of... Um, Flour. Needs to be salvaged just Thanks, a little bit. Yeah. All right, here we go. Fantastic. <laughs> and just... Turn it into a bowl and we're going to let it rest for 20 minutes. May I touch your roti now? Yes. 100%. 100%. Look, mom. I'm going to give you basic curry preparation techniques and then you're going to select your own ingredients. So, step number one. Yes. Oil and onions. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, that looks enough, okay. yeah. I think add all so that we get um, um, a lovely, rich, caramelized taste. Yeah. Good time cinnamon. to add, yeah. Cinnamon. Should we pop in the whole star yeah. anise? Sprinkle of mustard seeds. That should be enough. So we're gonna allow that to caramelize for about five to 10 minutes. We're ready to add some masala. Should we add the chicken? Right. And the ginger garlic? Ginger garlic also with the and chicken this. and the curry leaves. Curry yeah. leaf. Um, should we put all of this? Yeah. And we don't want to saute it for too long in oh, hot it, oil because... It'll burn. Yeah. Garlic becomes a little bit bitter when it burns. I think we can also add the remaining ingredients, which is the butternut. Butternut. Mm. Yes. Believe it or not, we're just about done. Yeah. Talk about a curry in a hurry. Curry in a hurry. This is a perfect recipe for a life on the, on the go. Absolutely. So, what is our final ingredient? Coriander. Oh, it makes for a beautiful garnish too. I think you've created a masterpiece. Oh, fantastic. Amit Raz is not only a wonderful chef, he's an excellent teacher. I thoroughly enjoyed my class today and my journey of Indian spices. I hope you at home will try my masala chicken ala butternut.